Hey everybody, so today I'm going to go over some ways that we can make combining Google Classroom and Seesaw a little bit easier. So the first thing I want to show you is how I put together a schedule of every single thing the students are going to need to use throughout the entire week. I put this together, there's a couple of options, one way is to use Google Sheets. If I was doing it with younger learners, however, I would not use that because they can click on and edit and mess up things. I would do slides instead and then give it to them in present mode. So what I did was I inserted my names of days using the word art tool because word art's a lot easier to move around in place. Then I made some shapes and I used my arrange tool to align and distribute them to get them all lined up neatly. I color coded them and now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to input some symbols and links so that students can look at their schedule for the week, they can click right on it, and it will take them to whatever assignments they need to do. Now I've begun inserting like my Zoom image and my Seesaw image. I'm going to be hyperlinking these images in a minute, but before I do that, I want to put a time under here. I could double click on my shape and type into it, but that's probably going to make it show up behind my images I added. I could try to add a text box, but text boxes can be hard to format and difficult to move. So I'm going to show you why I use word art. Use word art and say nine, nine o'clock. I fill it, it's easy to fill it and give it an outline, whatever color you want to really make it pop. And then I can take it over here and it's very easy to size exactly the way it's going to fit best and until it looks good. So I can move my little Zoom call image up, I can move my time up, and then my students can see, oh, I have a Zoom at nine o'clock for math and then I'm gonna have my Seesaw assignment. So what I'm going to do now is hyperlink these. So how I would do that is I'm going to click on my little Zoom call here. And up at the top, this link button shows up. And all I need to do is paste in the link to my Zoom call. I'm going to do the same thing with Seesaw. But I want to link, I don't want to just link it to Seesaw in general. I want to link it directly to the Seesaw assignment. So I'm going to show you how to get that. So I've got my link thing, these that I have assigned. And in my activities that I have assigned, I've got these three dots here, and I'm going to get the student link. Now here's what's awesome about this. If I wanna put this all together the week in advance, I can do that because if I have an assignment scheduled for tomorrow, but I link it today, when they click on it and try to go to it, just nothing will show up. So they can't get too far ahead of me or try to do things ahead of time. As long as those assignments are scheduled, they'll still only be able to get to it once it's time for that. So I'll do, I would do that with all my subjects. And then how I would give this to the students is I would not actually give them this slide deck itself where it could be editable because that gives students the freedom to delete things if they want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go File, Publish to the Web. I'm going to get a link. I could also get an embed link if I had a website I was embedding it in, but I don't need to do that right now because I'm just going to be putting it in this Google Classroom and I'm going to say publish. It's going to say, are you sure you want to publish? Because technically you're publishing this like a website to the internet. So you do want to be careful how you're sharing this link. And you may not want to put your Zoom links in there if you're going to make this link really widely available where anyone could get into the call. So you want to be really cognizant of how you're keeping students safe in that way. And I could post this in the stream. I like to post it as an actual assignment. So I create my assignment. And I'm gonna say, you know, this is week 1020 through 1024 schedule. And then I'm just gonna paste that link in here. And so I've pasted this link in, and here's what's nice is this is editable. So I could make different schedules. If I had a student within IEP or a 504 plan or needed some sort of accommodations and they weren't going to be doing all of the same exact assignments, is I could uncheck, I could select the few students that I actually want doing this, and then I could make a copy of that slide deck, make a few changes, and come back in and assign it to that student. So what they're going to see when they click on this link it's going to look like this. So they'll go, oh, I need to do my weekly schedule. I've got my Zoom call at 9. Seesaw, when they click on Seesaw, 
that button's going to take them straight to the assignment that they need to do. Now, one other issue that I know has popped up with this is students not being logged into their accounts. So something to look at, and I took a screenshot here, something to look at is when you go into your settings, so when you click on your class and you click on that little wrench in the upper right hand corner is your student sign in mode. As long as each student has their own device, change it to class code one to one devices. That way, when they're signed in on their device, they stay signed in on the device and they do not need to re-sign in again. If they are using shared devices and they need to be logging in regularly, print off those QR codes for them so that they can get in quickly and easily. Now, during the week, if I decide that I need to update this schedule, it's published to the web, which means it's always live. So if I change something on here, it will automatically change on that link. So I'll show you what that looks like. Let's say I decide to change the Zoom call. I say, ooh, actually not nine o'clock. I need it to be 10 o'clock. Now watch what happens when we refresh our link here. Now it says 10 o'clock. So using that publish to web feature in slides for student schedules is really helpful because it's not like you're giving them something and if you need to make changes partway through, they're not getting those changes. Those changes and fixes will always be showing up live. So I hope that helped give you a few kind of tips and tricks and pointers on getting your students integrated from Google Classroom through Seesaw, especially for those younger learners. There is a link down in the description of the video if you would like a copy of this template to use for assigning things to students in your classroom. Good luck.